Hi everyone, this is Lauren Malhoyt back with another ACI training. In this training, we're going to go over the VMware vCenter plugin for ACI. So as you can see, we're in the vCenter and we have our Cisco ACI Fabric plugin here. We can double click on that and we're taken to the plugin. In this video, we're going to create a new tenant. And again, we're doing this directly from the vCenter uh, UI. So I'm creating a tenant. We're calling it TFD-tenant. I select the fabric that I want it to belong to. So if I have multiple fabrics, I can select a certain fabric. And if I go into my APIC, I can see that I now have a TFD tenant. If I click on the ACI fabric back in vCenter, I can click on tenants and I see that I have all those tenants now. I can read those tenants. If I click on networking and go to the proper tenant up top, click on my new tenant, I can see that a VRF or a VRF and a bridge domain have already been created. I can create new ones if I want, give those a name, I don't have to create these new VRFs and, and bridge domains though. I can go with the default if I like, and those defaults will already be in the APIC as well. If I go into the application profile, this is where I do things like that policy that we've talked about so much. So the endpoint groups, the micro-segmented endpoint groups, things like contracts between those endpoint groups. So if I create a new endpoint group, call it TFD web, for example. And then I can edit the bridge domain that that endpoint group gets associated with. And click OK. So now I have a new endpoint group. I'm going to create a micro-segmented endpoint group as well. And for more information on that, again, go ahead and go to cisco.com slash go slash ACI, and you can get more information there, or of course, in this YouTube series. So I'll give this endpoint group a name. Maybe this is my app endpoint group. Again, I'm going to associate it with a bridge domain. Select the bridge domain, click OK. And in this case, I am going to use isolation, intra-EPG isolation. So that means that things, the endpoints within this endpoint group won't actually be able to talk to each other. And then I can also create the micro-segmented part where I can automatically pull in VMs, maybe by VM name, which is what I'm going to choose here. Could be by IP address, could be by ESXi host, the list goes on. And in this case, I'm going to do VM name contains TFD-app. So any endpoint group with that in the VM name will get pulled into this endpoint group. Now I have two endpoint groups, and of course I want them to be able to communicate. So I am going to create a contract. Again, this is all from the vCenter plugin. This can all be done within the vCenter plugin. I create a contract. And in this case, I am going to create a new contract from the APIC. Now you could create a contract within the vCenter plugin, or you can create it from the APIC, and I'm just going to show how both are possible. So I'm actually creating filters here. Maybe my filter will be, well, let's see, ICMP. So this will allow me to ping between endpoints within both endpoint groups. And again, I could have created this filter with from the vCenter plugin, but I'm choosing to show that we can do both. So there are a lot of 
things you could do here. You could have the APIC admin be creating filters that the vCenter admin could use, or the APIC admin can go through vCenter to create it. There's a lot of different things you can do. And of course, everything's locked down from role-based access control in the APIC. So now I can go in and find that filter, select it, drag it to the right, click OK. And now I have an application profile. And I can go into the APIC and show you that that application profile has been created in the correct tenant. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.